All right. All right. Yeah. So welcome to the leaderboard where I look at games that I've played and I rank them. And this time I'm doing it with a guest. Enzo is here. Hello, I am Enzo. You probably won't recognize me if you haven't seen the other podcast. But if you do, you know who Which, I am. If you haven't watched my other podcast, uh, what, what are you doing here? Do, go do that. Listen yeah, to go it. fuck it's, yourself. It's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Listen listen to Fists of Foam Reel and hear about gruesome violence every and, week or every and, other week. And a lot of homelessness for some reason. Yeah, that's been a bit of a theme lately, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing a lot of that recently, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so uh, as always, the, the way that this works is uh, we, we, we talk about a game, we rank it in the list, all opinions listed herein are our own subjective opinions, however, they are also true, so yeah. bear that in mind going forward. You know, they are like subjective they... opinions, but they are also objectively uh, correct. So if you disagree, you are wrong. Yeah, because because this is my domain, and here I am the arbiter of taste, which means that uh, basically it's just to keep the list consistent. I'm gonna have like final uh, final say on like where exactly it goes, and guests basically like argue me up or down is is kind of the format. Because I listen to a few other. Uh, ranking podcasts that have like more of an ensemble thing mm -hmm. and the result of that is that somebody will will come on and be like all right we're, we're ranking this game wait i think that it goes above the one that is at 121 but below the one that's at 123 what do we do about this so my solution to that is just that like guests argue me up or down but i i'll have like the final say on where exactly it goes so it'll be consistent i see uh how many yes. like how many episodes have been recorded so far uh, this is going to be episode three. Uh, the first two episodes were like lightning rounds with three games apiece, so there, there, there are six Ooh. games on the list currently. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, and uh, did you so have, far, didn't you have Jared for an episode, or am I crazy? Uh, he has not been on yet. Okay. Yeah, I've I've got him like listed for a couple episodes, but I haven't I haven't recorded any with him yet. Gotcha. Today we're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog two for the Sega Genesis. It was first released in. Japan on November 21st, 1992, then it hit North America and Europe on November 24th of the same year, and then Australia on December 1st of the same year, because Australia always gets things late, because they don't matter. Uh, it was well, developed... Was it the same year then? I don't think it was. Uh, yeah, it was the same year. It was still 1992. Oh, right. Right, December. Yeah. I... Right, I'm stupid. Yeah, yeah, de yeah December 1st, 90 yeah, it was like a, it was like a week later. Um, yeah, so it's developed by Sega Technical Institute and published by, of course, Sega. This is, of course, Sega's mascot for basically as long as they've been in the console business, pretty much. Like, mm -hmm. I think that there was, like, a short period of time where they didn't have Sonic as a mascot, but ever, like, ever since the first Sonic game came out, he's been pretty firmly their mascot, and, uh, and that's been the case even up till, like, right now, even though, uh... Even though there's there's kind of like less respect for the character in like the general uh, culture these days, because because haha memes about yeah, 3D, yeah, but yeah. So this is before all of that though. This is right after Sonic the Hedgehog one came out and was a big success with its much more edgier and more 90s attitude kind of marketing compared to Mario. And then they uh, decided to make a sequel to it and. Uh, Make it a much better game, in my opinion. Not that I dislike the first one, but I, I, I don't think I'm going to ruffle too many feathers by saying Sonic 2 is better than Sonic 1. Yeah, I mean, I agree completely, because Sonic 1 is not a game I had access to until 2017-ish, uh, mm -hmm. um, which is when I played the, the first game for the first time, and uh, the game is kind of rough. I, I, yeah, I haven't even beaten it yet, but, you know. Yeah, I... I have actually uh, finished Sonic 1, and, like, I think that some people can kind of, like, overstate, like, how hard it is to go back to, but it is pretty rough in places. It, it was definitely, like, an incomplete formula at that point in time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it doesn't even have the spin dash, which has been, like, a, a staple of the franchise ever since it was introduced in Sonic 2. Yeah, Jesus uh, Christ. That, that's, like, such an important change to the, <laughs> to the mechanics. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah, Sonic 2, like... 
I wouldn't say that this is like the perfection of the formula per se, but I, it's pretty close. It's like this is where a lot of what would become like really key elements of what makes Sonic cool would be put in place. Yeah, where you because got, the perfection, you got your spin dash. the perfection of the formula oh, comes in the next game. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, they, you've got like your spin dash. You've got uh, bigger levels than in the first one with. Uh, with more paths through them, more more ways to get up and down and all around as the song goes. Uh, you've got, you know, you, you start seeing more of, like, the speed sections where it's just like, okay, you did a tough platforming segment, now as your reward you get to just, like, blast through this little area here without having to think about it for a little while, and then you get more platforming after that. Yeah, you get to watch uh, which is... Sonic going fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, and that's... That's kind of that's kind of what the what the 2D games would be for a long time after that is this basically this formula which is you know understandable because it's a good formula it's a fun game you know oh yeah yeah so it was um was this also I'm trying to remember my memory of these games is very fuzzy because it's been a while since I played them I I, I beat mm -hmm. Sonic two like three or four years ago uh and i played through sonic one before that so like very very fuzzy memory here now sonic one still had the chaos emeralds co like collection aspect right to like get so supersonic Ooh, i have no idea actually because i haven't i haven't I, played I, sonic one extensively enough to be uh right sure about that um i i believe it did because i'm pretty sure that it yeah sonic one i think had the weird special stage where it was like spinning and like, um, and like, you had to like jump around in like the spinning area, like as a ball, uh, with that, like the with the background that was like shifting between like fishes and birds. That does ring a bell, but I, but yeah, I can't I can't like state for sure whether or not they were there or not. Yeah, regardless, um, uh, Sonic Two has way better special stages for collecting those Chaos Emeralds too. Like th this was also the first one where like the special stages were actually kind of fun. Yeah, personally, uh, I still don't super love those special stages. I think they're a little rough, actually. I mean, they're de they definitely are a little rough, but um, they're they're a damn sight better than the first games, in my opinion. Because in the first mm -hmm. game, like, it's literally like you're you're in a ball and you're in this weird level that it's like it's two D and gravity still applies normally, but the level is rolling, mm -hmm. like like the like the whole thing is rotating. And you are, and because you're in a ball, like you will, you will like roll down inclines, and then there are just like there are bounce pads to knock off of, and there are certain pads that if you hit them, it'll reverse the rotation, that, and certain pads that if you hit them, it'll like speed up or slow down the rotation. That sounds like one of the bonus stages in Sonic Three. Um, I think they might have brought it back in Sonic Three, because but it's definitely in, there in Sonic yeah, One. In Sonic Three. At least in the and Knuckles variant, I'm not sure if it's in the base as well because I don't remember doing many bonus stages in the ba in the uh, base game. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the variants of bonus stages there, which is, you know, in Sonic Tree, well, we're we would talk about that game in more detail, like if we made an episode on it. But just like to to talk about this in particular, um, in Sonic mm -hmm. Tree is when they split like bonus stages and special stages, so. In the in Sonic Two and and earlier than that, you would need to like pass by a checkpoint uh, pole, and then it would like trigger a little spark some sparklies over it if you had like the amount the right amount of ring I believe fifty rings, and then you would like jump into those and that would take you to the special stage. In Sonic Three right. and after they split that into two different things. So if you do the you can still do the thing with like pass by a checkpoint pole and like jump into the sparklies. But that is just going to be a bonus stage that just, like, gives you extra lives or whatever. Or, like, yeah. sh elemental shields or something. And mm -hmm. for the Chaos Emerald special stages, you would have to find, like, the big ring that is, like, hidden right. in, a, in some location. So Yeah, and I think that's that's uh, kind of, like, a kind of a more interesting way to do it because then finding all your Chaos Emeralds becomes more of, like, a, like an exploration challenge. Yeah, it's, rather it's than like a just treasure like... hunt. Yeah, whereas in yeah in Sonic Two, it's still very much like you you get the Chaos Emeralds by just like 
you know, by just holding onto your rings, essentially, like you just yeah. gotta, you just gotta not get hit too much, and and you'll be able to start getting chaos emeralds, assuming that you don't suck at the special stages, which I kind of do, but uh, I do don't worry well. about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, because this one, I probably don't like them enough because I suck at them, and because you know it's a little rough to to have like tails chasing you around and losing rings for you as well. So. Yeah, well, especially because um, cause this one's special stages are, like, this pseudo 3D thing, where it's, like, it's not exactly 3D, but it's kind of like it, where yeah. they just have, um, they're doing, like, the OutRun thing, where, in, where like, they, they sort of pretend to do, like, a 3D movement by just having, uh, having, like, a, a, scrolling a, a background. background. That, yeah, 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 exactly, and, and, like, you're running away from it, and, you know, collecting stuff and whatnot, and, like, it... Like, I understand kind of the rationale behind it of, like, hey, this is a special stage, so let's do, like, this kind of neat visual thing that, that will be impressive for 1992. Yeah. And, like, you know, people will think it looks really cool. And, like, it does look kind of cool, yeah. but it, it's 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 not aged as well as the rest it, of the game, it, and it's a bit harder to play. It's it's interesting, and, um, and it has a decent song associated with it, but um, it... It doesn't play that well. <laughs> I can say that. Yeah. Much. <laughs> I, I can see it being a lot easier to do if you have two players. Because, well, we haven't quite, we haven't really mentioned this yet, but this is the game that introduces Tail to the, to the series, actually. Right. This is the first time Tail has made an appearance in Sonic games. And yeah, Tails with his fucking pun name, incidentally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, but, like, you. As you're, like, running, Tails is running right behind you, and you can, like, move Sonic around from, like, left to right in, like, this half-pipe-type structure that you are running on. Right. And Tails is going to follow with, like, a second of delay, and you can also jump, and Tails is also going to jump with, like, a second of delay. Um which it, yeah it's not it, it makes it <laughs> it's not really, the, the most responsive yeah the, pr the problem is that you know after the first stage I, I don't think the first stage has any like obstacles I think it's only the second on and and like later um, in which they add like obstacles in which if you hit them you lose rings right and the whole point of the of completing the special stage is like getting enough rings to get the chaos emerald at the end and you, because Tails is like always following you around, it's inevitable that Tails gets like at least like one third of the rings they are collecting. Um, and mm -hmm. with the delayed movement and jump, it makes it really hard for him to avoid uh, obstacles, which makes it really easy to lose rings. And I like yeah, I just gave up trying to get all the Chaos Emeralds <laughs> on my on my playthrough recently this week. Because I just couldn't yeah, get that, him to that's, work. That's basically right. what I did too. Yeah, it's just it's it's a very rough mini game. Now, did Sonic Two have the ability to play without Tails, or was that only added in Three? Ooh, I bl yes, yes, it does, but it's a little bit hidden okay. because mm -hmm. the difference between Sonic Two and Three is that well, one of the differences is that when you hit like Star Game and Sonic Two, it will just throw you straight into the game, straight into Emerald mm -hmm. Hill. And Sonic Tree, it will throw you into a file select screen in which you get to like. Where you like choose what yeah, characters. You, you yeah. choose like what, who to play as, and like where to, to go if you have like uh, save data of like multiple stages and stuff. Um, yeah. But now, and in, in Sonic Two, you gotta like go into in, like an options menu yeah, or some shit yeah, like in that. Yeah, Sonic right? Two, you gotta go into the yeah. options menu and select which player you want. If you want Sonic and Tails, just Sonic or just Tails. And then you have to start from there. You don't go back to the main menu. You start from the options. Yeah, menu. very. It's really weird. Very, very odd way of handling it, uh, which is unfortunate because playing without tails is kind of like the optimal way to play this game. I think it also doesn't help. Like... The, it also doesn't help that uh, if I remember if I remember correctly, the options menu is like kind of hidden because it's not shown. Yeah. Like in the title screen, you have to scroll down to an invisible option for it to show up, which is right. fucking weird. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's 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 very unfortunate because because yeah, tails kind of gets in the way all the fucking time in this game, both in the special stages and like out in normal stages where he's just like he's just he's a distraction. Um, he doesn't keep up with you very well. Yeah, it's just 
it, I, th- I think it's overall better a better experience to play as solo Sonic, but the option to do that is hidden in an invisible options menu. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like I think if you have two players, one controlling Tails, I believe in the special stage, the second player is able to control him separately from you. Mm-hmm. So that should make yeah. the special stage like less of a chore to do. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Aside from aside from the special stages, um, you know, you got all your normal stages, which are very, you know, very. I think that there's there's a bit of a step up in like stage design uh, from Sonic One, both in terms of like theme and like level layout, right? Yeah. Because, like, in Sonic One, the themes aren't they're not terrible, but they're not like super memorable either, and some of them are slightly reused. Like they reuse like some Marble Garden ass or not Marble Garden. They use re- they reuse some Labyrinth Zone assets like very late in the game, for example. Mm-hmm. Um. There are multiple stages that are like just designed to be this is the slow stage to fuck up, to fuck with you a bit, which isn't like a huge problem, but it is kind of like may- maybe you should maybe you should do more to like incorporate slower segments into regular levels instead of just having a dedicated slow stage, you know, uh, which is what Sonic Two does, uh, and like. Yeah, thematically they're not super memorable. Like Green Hill Zone is is of course iconic, but beyond that you've got like. Marble Garden, which is just kind of like a generic, uh, like it's actually Greek just zone. Funnily enough, it's just Marble Zone. Marble Garden is it not just Marble Zone? Marble Garden Zone is a Sonic Tree Zone. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. See, I'm, you, you see, it's it's even it's even a an unmemorable enough zone that I that I keep <laughs> that I keep referring to it by the name of a pr- presumably more memorable zone from a later game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The thing is that um, yeah. So. I also played through Sonic Mania again recently, um, which made me realize like what Sonic does um, with the the aesthetic and like the the themes of a zone is just like picking different things, like picking different concepts and meshing them together into like right. something, like into one idea, and trying to come up with like an entire place out of that concept. Um, yeah that is not that is something i feel uh sonic one doesn't do it's just right oh this is a oh this is a, a forest or oh this is like a cave or whatever uh in in yeah, sonic like Ch- here, here's here's like some greek temples <laughs> yeah in sonic 2 they start to be a little more playful with that and then in sonic 3 they start to get even more playful with that and on and on until they like go crazy with it um, yeah, and Sonic Two also just has like way like more visually interesting levels. I think like way yeah. just they're they're prettier to look at. Yeah, definitely. Um, like, it, especially because like you you get through Emerald Hill Zone, which is basically just Green Hill Zone again, but that's fine because Green Hill Zone is iconic. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then your next zone that you start in is Chemical Plant Zone, which is like one of the most visually distinct zones in the entire series. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's, it it, it looks gorgeous. Like you you've got like these 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 tubes with like blue chemical running through them everywhere and then that serves as their main platform these... actually right yeah they, and and they're contrasted with like these these yellow platforms on top of them so you've got like this really nice color contrast that really sticks out mm-hmm. um the way that it's laid out is like this 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 big like labyrinthine uh it, it's it, it's like some kind of like chemical treatment plan or something and the the result of that is that like the tubes that you're running on are just going all over the fucking place and like looping back on themselves and just going nuts everywhere. Uh, you've got like this is where you start getting like more set pieces than than you had in Sonic One, where like there's the the bit where um, where you've got like the two paths that are crisscrossing over each other and then the water starts to rise, for example. Yeah, uh, like it's so just nice. these these little yeah these little memorable moments that are just like oh hey this is like. I'm I'm going to remember this when I'm done with it because this is like a a unique and interesting challenge here that I'm that I'm being faced with and this is neat. Uh, also, man, that 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 zone's fucking background music, the yeah, best. It's incredible. Um, one thing. I yeah, I'll pro- to... I'm probably gonna put that in the. I'm probably gonna put that in this video at some point. Yeah, I wanna I wanna say that like um, you mentioned, you know, Emerald Hill is just kind of like another Green Hill. Uh, kinda, but there's like this this one thing that I like to point out. I feel like the background 
because you know all of the backgrounds and like all of these stages are fantastic looking and like right. whenever i play through a sonic game i just like to sit down for a minute and just like appreciate what is behind the uh the the, the area where you're playing right um i feel yeah. like green hill zone has a much more interesting and like beautiful background of like mountains and like uh waterfalls and and like little islands popping out and stuff and, mm-hmm. and like little forests even i think it's really pretty um emerald hill zone not as interesting it's mostly just like a blue sky with some clouds and stuff um yeah it's it's kind of weird like how the background evolved between green hill zone and emerald hill zone because like you said it's it, it's less interesting in terms of like what's yeah, back there like green um, like but also emerald hill kind of devolves a little bit from from what was in in green hill uh, it, it's interesting though, because it's like it's both like progress and regression. Because there's less going on back there, or there's less like there's less stuff back there, but all but it has like way more of like parallax effects on it and whatnot that Green Hill Zone did. Yeah, and and the zone itself, I feel, is like better designed overall, and it has like less like mm-hmm. unfair death traps like it like it had in Green Hill. Um, right, but. The reason I'm bringing that up is because uh, the background in Chemical Plant is fucking gorgeous. It's this like a uh, big, um, this big like city in the background with like mostly reddish and orangish buildings, uh, with some yeah. greens and yellows, uh, and then you can see what seems to be like, I, <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure what it is. I always took it to be like some sort of. Um, just a water pool of like or like sea that is like separating this big metropolis place uh from the right, actual some kind of like bay plant. or something yeah yeah exactly yeah. and you only get to see like this part of the of the background when you start the zone because you start at the very top of the zone and as you start to to go uh further and further into the zone you start to descend and the background changes to become like more uh, mechanic and like these like big vessels containing like weird chemicals and and stuff, just like doing science stuff basically. But it it, it has like a lot yeah. going on back there, and it's really interesting to look at. Yeah, the the whole game has like way more, uh, just yeah, just way more going on in most of the backgrounds and like. It's also where it started to really lean into, like, the environmentalism aspect of Sonic's aesthetic, like, more so than the first game did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which I think is, I, th- I think is very strong theming for it. I think that it fits really well. And it's, like, very appropriate for, like, this kind of, this kind of, like, early to mid-90s style of, of game that's, like, you know, it had, like, a very particular feel to it. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, I, I don't think that I'm going to ruffle too many feathers by pointing out that, like, Sonic was basically designed as like a marketing gimmick um which i don't think is a bad thing some people say that like that like invalidates the value of the character i don't think it does yeah like it's just it's just like an aspect of what his origin was and because of that like it makes sense to to pair him together with these sort of very like these very early 90s kinds of kind of thematic concepts of like environmentalism and whatnot which is you know they're still to some degree relevant today but they're not handled in the same way that they were back then it, it just when when you when you have them paired with this kind of theming, it just feels very cohesive, you know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So, you have uh, so yeah the in chemicals and in chemical plant zone, you have like your first experience with water in this uh, in this game, or you know true, some yeah. some purple liquid, some purple chemical uh, that acts right, right. like water. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think this level has air bubbles, so. In this um, level, I think you're right. You just gotta get out fast, or you're going to drown. It's just how it goes. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of like it's kind of a neat introduction to the idea of like letting you know, like, hey, don't don't get stuck in water, dude. Like that that's a bad time. Like you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna want to get out of there. Like later on, it'll introduce air bubbles and be like, okay, so you can hang out a little bit in certain cer- certain circumstances. But like this this first introduction is very much like this shit will drown you yeah, it's, get out of it. it. It's it, I bring that up just to say, you know, usually, well, all Sonic games have like some water level or some variant of a water level. Right, right. right. Uh, yeah. And Chemical Plant Zone is not the water level in this game. It just introduces you to the water system because the water level comes after it. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's an interesting way to handle it where like, 
it, it, it brings up the con like it brings up the concept without the training wheels this time, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it it really like it, it's really like a good way to like just kind of grab the player by the soldiers and say, "Hey, this shit is dangerous." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and one last point I I want to make about Chemical Plant is that uh, replaying this, man, that fucking boss is bullshit. Not because of the boss itself, but because um. When you um, when you're making your run for the boss screen, you're gonna pick up some speed, um, mm-hmm. and you're usually going to end up on the very far right end of the screen. And the problem is that in Chemical Plant Zone in the boss screen, you have a permanent platform in the middle, and the platforms on the right and the left side keep flipping and dropping down. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, this happened twice in my in my playthrough this week, where I would just like when running to the boss arena, I would just uh, pick up speed, end up on the right side. The platform would immediately flip and and throw me off screen, and I would die. <laughs> yeah, like before oh, yeah, before Eggman even times. shows up. Yep. Yeah, a little little bit of an oversight there. Uh, they're they're still kind of like coming to grips with like the momentum mechanics. It feels like, um, yeah. which you know, three kind of kind of handles it a lot better in a lot of ways. But you know, we'll talk about that when we get to that one. <laughs> oh yeah, have you played that one? Yes, I've played. Um, I played most of it. I need to finish it before I put it on the list, mm. which I'll probably do before too much longer here. Yeah. But yeah. So. So I don't necessarily like. Um. I don't necessarily want to, like, try to force ourselves to go through, like, every zone here, but just, like, if there's any other, like, zone-specific stuff you wanted to talk about that's just, like, particularly interesting about a particular zone, then, you know, we can can go on to that before uh, before kind of talking about, like, endgame stuff. Gotcha. Well, I am just going to mention, you know, Aquatic Run Zone, because we already, like, mentioned it uh, before. It's what comes right after Chemical Plant. Um... Not the most memorable zone uh, by name or design. Um, this is the zone that has like two paths, one top, one uh, bottom. The bottom path is flooded with water. And that's when you're going to yeah. get uh, air bubbles for the first time. Um, yeah, I do think it's neat that um, this is the first time that you see like... Like normally the, the higher path is usually like the faster, cooler one. But this is the first time that the that the higher path is like really like mechanically different from the lower one where it's like if you're up top then you're you're running through the trees and you're up in the leaves and it's it's fast and it looks and it looks beautiful but if you're go- if you're down below you are in the fucking water on like and it's <laughs> yeah, dark getting way fucked darker by, like, piranhas and, like, and shit yeah um this this level also has those fucking asshole uh arrow traps that just shoot at you as you pass by which uh, oh, yeah. are very funny to me yeah they are yeah. they are pretty funny and uh I had completely forgotten those came from the stage, uh, but they get featured in the stage on Sonic Mania later on, so that's cool. Um, yeah. Um, do, doesn't the doesn't the boss of this stage also like kind of use them? Uh, yes, actually, uh, because the boss yeah. of the stage is two like pillars on either side, and Robotnik is flying like a, a machine that has a hammer, and he flies over to the left side, hammers it, and that is going to fire like a dart that is going to like stick to the right pillar and you have to like jump onto that dart and like jump to to attack him so he f- he like keeps like going back and forth between the right and the left and like doing that um yeah I, it's, it's a really neat boss fight having having you like have to use the hazards as your platforms to get to reach him yeah but what i want to mention uh, specifically about the stage is the music because this is this is some really underrated music in the the sonic franchise it's probably one of my favorite songs in uh, early Sonic games. It's just like this really nice, I want to say tango, but uh, but I'm not like experienced enough and generous to, to confirm if it is <laughs> one or not. But it's, it's really good. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of difficult to find uh, a track in a Sonic game that like isn't really good at this point in time. You know, like oh, the, yeah. this is... This is a time period where, like, they were really firing on all cylinders with just, like, fucking awesome, like, chiptune rock tracks that, that, um, that kind of dip into various genres at different times. And it's just, it all sounds great. Like, really fucking good. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. So, well, you said we should be, yeah. don't have to, like, go over every zone, but I guess you can at least, like, mention them. 
briefly. Uh, yeah, I mean, what what I what I kind of what I kind of want to do for like the the format of this show is is rather than like try to like you know like like for for fists of film we'll kind of go through uh like the whole movie and like summarize it whereas with games i feel like it's more pertinent to just kind of mention the stuff that's interesting and kind of go go from there you know because yeah, just... games are so big like yeah. you can't you can't always like really summarize them yeah well i i probably have too much to say about this game because this is in particular oh, the first game i ever played like my my parents yeah, had no, like I... uh, my parents had a mega drive uh, and when I was born, when I was like what five, four or something, um, mm-hmm. they like gave it to me. And we only had two games, like two cartridges, which was Sonic Two, and like this weird top-down shooting game. Um, right. So this was the the first game I ever played, and I have a lot of lot of uh, nostalgic memories of it. Yeah, any anything that you feel is is worth mentioning, like go go at, go right ahead. Like you know, you're 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 more of an expert on this game than I am, and like <laughs> I, I'm not here trying to like limit what you what you can say about it or anything. Yeah, I would just like briefly mention the zones and and say like what is you know relevant or not, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. so after Aquatic Ruin, we get to Casino Night, which is the first time we get introduced to like a more like uh, heavily urban inspired or themed zone as far as i'm aware i'm not in, i'm not sure uh the first game has something like that uh i, I don't think it did yeah i think this is a per i think like the the idea behind it is cool because i like uh casino aesthetics in general but the zone is pretty annoying overall um yeah it's like a big weird like pinball deal and like I mean, kind of turning Sonic into a pinball stage is like that's kind of like an obvious thing to do with him since he rolls into a ball. Yeah, I mean, we, about, we like, even momentum. have uh, Sonic's pinball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and it, like, it makes sense. Like, you you got a character who rolls into a ball, and his mechanics are all about like physics and momentum. So, what are you gonna do with him? Fucking pinball. But like, I, I don't think that this is like the best way that it would be handled yeah. as the series goes on. Yeah, we we even yeah. we see a better way to do it in uh, the. What came to be a Sonic CD eventually, which was mm. supposed to be a Sonic 2 port for the Sega CD, but that's a whole other can of worms. Uh, right, in right. which, uh, or, wait, I, on, I thought I thought I thought Sonic CD was originally supposed to be Sonic Three. Uh, the story I've heard is that it was going to be Sonic 2 port for the Sega CD, but as they like as they started to like going to the the inner dealings of like porting it they decided that it wasn't like a good enough game to show like the the power that the the new console mm-hmm. sega cd had kind of deal right so they started like reworking it and reworking it and reworking it until it eventually became like a, an entire new thing okay yeah um yeah. but yeah so in in that game the boss of the second zone is actually a, a pinball stage in which you have to like shoot uh you have to hit sonic up to like the top of the zone to, to attack robot robot man oh, yeah, i think I, I think i remember that one <laughs> I, i've played a little bit of sonic cd but i haven't i haven't played much of it i just but i think i remember that i just fight. called him robot man that's fucked uh that he that that is that is what he is he is he is the <laughs> robot man <laughs> yeah sonic cd is, is another game i started playing like uh last week i want to say for the first time because that's when I realized I could just emulate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of stuff that you can just emulate at this point with it with a capital J and a capital E. Yeah. So after that, we get uh, Hilltop Zone. Uh, not very interesting. It just has a lot of lava, and uh, right. the theme is kind of neat, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. Mystic Cave. That. I remember being my favorite zone when I was a kid, and then I hated it when I played it again. It has a lot of I mean, the thing it has about, a lot of death traps, a lot of death. It traps. does, yeah. Uh, but but what it also has is a really gorgeous tile set. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous, and, and the, the song is nice this, and like, spoopy, you know. Yeah, but yeah, like this. It's it's all these like really like rich deep greens everywhere like it just it looks beautiful yeah i i just want to mention in the act two of that zone when you're reaching like uh when you're getting like closer to the end of the act two uh there's this particular place in which you get like a an invincibility box and then you start going and then you get a second invincibility box so it like resets your invincibility (laughs) 
And when you go a little bit forward, uh, you gotta pull and you gotta pull into a vine to bring down a uh, draw bit draw bridge. Jesus, I can't speak, so that you can <laughs> like cross and and keep going. Um, mm -hmm. But it because you are like invincible and you're just like going fast because you know you don't have to worry about enemies when you have invincibility. Um, right. It's really easy to miss that vine and fall into the pit uh, before that drawbridge, which is a really fucked right. situation because it's not a it's not a an endless pit like you would see in other stages that just kills you immediately. It's just a very deep pit that has spikes at the bottom. <laughs> And that you can't jump out of, so you run, God. you run in, you fall in all the way to the bottom, and you stand there on the spikes with with your invincibility that is still going, waiting for it to end so that you can lose your rings and die. It's really fucked. Ugh. God, that's awful. <laughs> it's so fucked, but it's it makes me think of the uh, the the place in in level like zone one act two of sonic one where where you pick up an invincibility and then there's like immediately afterwards is a bit where there's like a bunch of little spike picks spike pits and like you're gonna want to just run straight forward as fast as you can through that area because you're invincible but like what'll happen is you'll fall down into a spike pit uh not die on the spikes because you're invincible but the edge of the pit the wall there is not solid so you'll just like run straight through the <laughs> wall and into a bottomless pit there it's such a dick move it's such yeah. a big move. Look. But yeah. Um, from Mr. Cave, you would be able to access the Hidden Palace Zone that I believe was removed, but someone modded it back in or some shit like that. Or you can access it, or like the remnants of it with cheats or whatever. Right. Uh, we get Oil Ocean, which has a pretty dope song. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a really cool zone, it's, I think. Like the... Yeah, I think conceptually, it's really cool. It has just a an overall really cool aesthetic to it yeah like the the all you know obviously like the 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 oil everywhere is like very striking um the the way that like all of the machinery looks is cool i like those platforms that are like it's like a it's like a platform on top of like a, a valve where like the pressure builds up and like shoots it upward and you gotta jump off when it's at at the height mm -hmm. uh yeah it's a it's a it's a neat zone aesthetically even though mechanically it's a little bit dodgy because, well, for one thing, you can skip past a lot of it by just spin-dashing it in the oil. Yeah, and it, it can kill you very easily as well because there's a lot yeah. of uh, moving platforms that can just crush you if you come in too fast. Because mm -hmm. Sonic, yeah, keeps, kind of when... Sonic keeps putting his big head between two spots and getting it crushed. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, he, he, you, get, you get hit by the Mickey's Dick Smasher. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, that, yeah that, 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 that's... Yeah, go ahead. That that as that aspect to me has always been like one of the biggest flaws of Sonic is just the fact that if you get caught between two moving platforms, it's just instant death no matter what. Like that always felt like bullshit to me. Yeah, it's it's kind of lame, but they they start to like do it a lot less in the in the other games, yeah. which is good. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Oil Ocean, pretty cool zone. Uh, they really did it justice in Mania, which we'll get to eventually. Um. Mm. After that, we get Metropolis Zone that I want to talk about for a little bit longer, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Because Metropolis Zone is the first zone in this game, and the only zone in this game, in which instead of it having a, f a single act and then... Uh, well, act one, and then act two, and then a boss fight, it has three acts before a boss fight. Um, mm -hmm. And I am entirely unsure of why they do that because it's not even the final zone of the game yeah it's a bit of a weird choice uh but i don't mind it because you know it's it's a cool looking zone with cool themes and um and a cool song um i do yeah, maybe maybe they just wanted to to hang out there for a little while longer the, the thing that comes to mind to me is that they had a lot of mechanics that they wanted to experiment with and they didn't have enough space in just two acts for it. Because it's striking to me that in all three acts of the zone, there are different mechanics that you play with. Uh, like you right. got like screws that you have to like run on top of to like go up or down. Um, you have um, you have like these bouncy platforms on like either side of the of like a a tight like passage upwards like a vertical tight passage 
that is going to like bounce you right. up. You have uh, these like spiraling, spiraling uh, horizontal tubes that let you like run around them in a spiral that eventually got reused into um, flying battery zone. Um, yeah, those those things are really cool. I'm glad they came back. Yeah, they're they're cool because especially because they let you look at the at the sprite in like different angles. It's cool to see like all yeah. those angles animated, like that they cared to put something like that into the game. Um, mm-hmm. You have um, you have like these giant like rotating wheels that you can ride on. You have like giant like gears that you can get squeezed between and die. <laughs> and yeah it's just a lot of stuff that you can do in that zone so i guess that's interesting yeah it feels like they had like a lot of a lot of neat ideas for like oh here's something cool we can do with like this like moving factory type area and like and they just kept going and going and we're like wait shit this is like three levels worth of stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um and it's it's like this this very uh nice mint-ish green tone for the for most of the walls of the zone which uh, mm-hmm. lead me to believe that this served as like the base for them to eventually make Metallic Madness for the Sonic CD, because it's mm-hmm. kind of the same deal. It's like this big uh, factory type place, which has basically the same base color and and the mm-hmm. same themes. So just just something that I noticed, you know, now that I'm playing True CD and play True True again. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. After that, we get a Sky Chase, which is a single act zone with no boss at the end, um, in which you're just on top of the tornado that uh, Tails is uh, driving. Driving? Right, and it, and it right. becomes like a weird little like shmup type thing, except you're not shooting. <laughs> yeah, you're jumping, and, and Tails like, yeah. does his best to catch you. Um, I mean... Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it like actually impossible to fall off of a plane in that zone? It is not. You can absolutely do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I could have sworn that it was like some. I, I guess I, I guess I'm just misremembering. Like the I don't remember how you do it. I think it's something weird uh, to do with like spin dashing close to the screen to the end of the screen mm-hmm. or something like that. But you can fall off. Yeah. Um, oh, so you have to like actively like you have to like actively kind of fuck over tails to fall off. Yeah, kind of. Um, okay all right like so so long as you're just doing jumps and like standing still or just like moving by walking a little bit i think you should be okay just don't like go too fast i guess gotta not go too fast (laughs) yeah that's how you play sonic yeah exactly um and i believe yeah 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 while you are flying on tails you get to see the next stage because um uh, Eggman flies by in the Wing Fortress zone, uh, in like a little like as a little background element that passes by, uh, and eventually at the end of Sky Chase, you just like, I believe, um, oh no, it's not at the end of Sky Chase. It's the be- the very beginning of Wing Fortress zone, which is also a single act zone. Um, you are flying up to the stage on the tornado, and it gets shot by a laser beam. And then you have to like jump right. off into the stage, and I don't remember if you actually have to press the button to do it, or if Sonic just does it automatically. But if you have to press the button to jump on, that is fucking hilarious. Because imagine just Sonic fucking, you you don't press anything. You think it's a cutscene, and he just falls to the death to death for tails. <laughs> That'd be fucking funny. Yeah, it's. It, it's um it's always neat to me when you see in like these these like old retro style games how like it, some of them will just do like oh you just go to the next level don't worry about it and then some of them will do stuff like this where like it actually kind of shows you going from one level to the next in a in a way that has like continuity to it uh, which always stands out to me as like a neat thing yeah Sonic Chu didn't do that all the time it did it a couple times um, yeah Sonic Sonic Three does it a lot Sonic Three does it a lot and it's really cool. Um, yeah. And Sonic Mania, the way it was released was weird because it started off doing them and then it stopped for like a chunk of stages and then it went to doing them again for a little bit and then it stopped again. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, and then yeah. in the in the Plus release, they fixed that and like added translations to every stage. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, Wing Fortress is... You spend most of the stage running around the top of 
like the outside of this giant like sp- not spaceship but like more of like a a giant plane type place there's a lot of pitfalls a lot of like instant deaths so you gotta be careful uh you end the stage right. by going inside and fighting like some weird machine that is hanging on top of the of the ceiling of the place while Eggman watches on the right side of the screen. Um, right, yeah, he's just he's just hanging out. Yeah, just he's hanging out on. and laughing at you. Um, and after that, he is going to run off. You're going to run off after him. Um, and you're going to see him taking off in, like, a spaceship type deal. And then you have, like, this cool little cutscene in which... Um, uh, Sonic like runs over and jumps and grabs onto the side of the spaceship and just holds on tight until Eggman fucking <laughs> leaves the atmosphere and like sick. and like goes like you can see like the blue of the earth like being left behind as you go like into the darkness of the space and uh, Eggman just goes into the death egg and you you disembark and you are finally in the in the final zone of the game, the Death Egg Zone, which and, and Death Egg Zone is is like just boss fights, right? Yeah, Death Egg Zone. I yeah. I believe Death Egg was in the first game, or was it Scrap Brain? I think it's Scrap Brain. Scrap Brain in the first game. Um, yeah, yeah, there's Scrap Brain in the first game. But yeah, Death Egg Zone in this game, it's just uh, it's just two bosses back to back. So you're going yep. and also two bosses back to back without tails and without rings. Yeah, that's that's the part where it gets like, this this is like probably like the roughest part of the game to me, just because it's like okay, fight two bosses without rings, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, it's <laughs> fucked. But uh, and yeah, I th- I think to an extent the first boss is worse, uh, because the f- yeah, Met- Metal Sonic is like definitely like the 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 yeah. low point of the um, game. And, for me. Um, actually, it's not Metal Sonic in this game. Uh, Metal Sonic came in uh, Sonic CD. Um, okay, what what is it in this one? That is the Mecha Sonic. Um, okay, Mecha Sonic. There we a... go. Man, that's 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 kind of fucked up though, because this this one looks more metal and the other one looks more Mecha. I guess, yeah, to an extent. Because uh, this because this one is just like just like flat gray gun metal, and the other one's like a, a legit robot that looks like Sonic. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, the, it's like this bulkier Sonic with with like yeah. actual like spikes on the back of a. Uh, of his head and body that you know yeah don't they move like a buzzsaw they do yes and and yeah. that is pretty cool because um he is going to be deployed on like the right end of the of the screen and um i died a bunch to him when i was playing um mm-hmm. this week so i got to like watch his patterns and they're always the same so he is going to first uh he's going to like rotate the the, the blade spikes thing as like a little saw and then he's going to curl up into a ball and like go from one side of the screen to the other, and then after that he is just going to do like dashes without um without curling up. And the thing here is that while he's curled up, if if you touch him, you're dead because it's like blades yep. all around him. Uh, but if right. he is just uh, going by normally, um. If you are in spinball mode, you don't die. So the the strategy that I ended up uh, noticing and utilizing is that when he descends, if you stop like a little bit to the left of him, like not like just enough that you can touch him, but uh, not enough that you would touch the spikes on, on his back, you can just spin dash in place while he is standing there preparing to curl up into a ball and get like five hits on him or something. Oh god. And then you can do the same thing like when he is just dashing by without curling up and just like stand in place like spin dashing and you just like destroy <laughs> him. It it's really funny how easy he goes down when you do that. <laughs> um Yeah, it's always fun to to find ways especially like especially with like a boss that like to do it the the intended way is like honestly kind of unfair. Like if you can just find a way to to fuck with it and and to just like break it a little bit, that's always fun. Yeah, and uh, the the room is going to explode. Eggman is going to run out of uh, his little back room where he's controlling, uh, Mechasonic, and you're going to chase him down into the next room, 
where he is going to jump into this big ass robot that is designed to look at him, to look like him, and uh, the final boss starts with one of the best final boss uh, songs of any Sonic game, IMO. It's really good. Yes. Yeah, it's a really great song. I like the design of this robot too. It's like um it, I think that it's a lot more like memorable than most of the most of the boss designs in Sonic games, which are all like kind of like kind of fairly generic machines that just have robotic in them, but this one mm. is like it, it's like this like big like robot version of Eggman with like with like drill arms. Very cool. Yeah, I think people just refer to it as the Death Egg robot, which is, you know, yeah. accurate. Um, right <laughs> but yeah it's, it's a really yeah, it, it makes a it makes a it makes a comeback as a boss fight in uh sonic generations as well and then sonic mania as the boss that's of, right yeah like... as the boss of green hill yeah um but it's a it's a more slow boss fight because you know you're being careful not to immediately die uh because if you die you right. know there's no checkpoints in between if you die you're gonna fight mecha sonic again right and like and also because this this boss is not not like a not like a hit it wherever kind of boss. This is one where you have to like hit a specific Wii point that is right on his ass. Yeah, well, you can hit his face as well when um, in right, during right, a couple yeah. animations. Um, you can also be ballsy like I was and uh, go to like all the way on one of the end of the screen and um, spin dash and jump at the right time to jump over his arms and hit his head while he is standing straight oh, um mm-hmm. but that can kill you a lot of times if you're not sure about the timing so i don't recommend right. it <laughs> but yeah yeah so so yeah sonic 2 is like it, it's probably the most influential game in the sonic series because the first one you know it was it was the first one at all but like the second one is where it really is where the series really figured out what it wanted to be yeah it's where it really and, became sonic yeah it, both in terms of like like th- how it how they go about like doing level layouts and like what mechanics they have and also in terms of just like the the themes and the tone and like the aesthetic of it like it is this is this is the game that you think of when you think sonic the hedgehog absolutely uh and it's you know it's got it's got some rough patches like you know like i said uh not a fan of fighting the bosses with no rings that's Mm -hmm. that's a little bit much but like overall uh i'd say it's a very good game that like very much deserves the the reputation that it kind of has for being like you know the the really good one like the like the the one that people think of again when they think sonic mm-hmm. uh based on that i'm i'm kind of looking at like the four star range here what do you think four star range pretty fucking good huh um i actually agree with that um i don't think yeah. it's fantastic i think uh, you know going back to it it has a lot of a lot of like uh, rough spots that i would prefer to change um mm-hmm. but mainly because um while I think uh, Sonic 2 is by no means like a perfect game, it's it's just a just a really good game. Uh, yep. I think we are going to keep the five star ranking for when you get to Sonic 3. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I think that I think that that's probably. I haven't finished Sonic 3 yet, but based on what I've played so far, it definitely seems more of a more of a five star game than Sonic 2 does. Yeah, because. I guess yeah. we'll discuss it in, in more depth when we get to it, but I, I can just mention here that it has a lot of very unique changes to the formula that makes it stand out a lot more, uh, such yeah. as uh, including mini bosses uh, after the first act of a stage instead of just having like a plain finish and. Mm-hmm having different themes for act one and act two of a stage i think those are the oh yeah that's a that that's a very big improvement yeah. we're like it's it's fucking nuts to reach angel island zone and get to the end of act one and then uh and and then suddenly like everything is on fire yeah like, that's fucking sick it's really cool and it, it, like yeah. that game sonic 2 has a really really big spot in my heart as you know again the first game that i've ever played and uh just being uh, a game that i played so many so many times it's a it's a mm-hmm. game i love to death um but 
I still hold Sonatry closer to my heart than it. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's something most people can agree with. Like, even if it wasn't the first game that they played, like most people can agree that like it's a very special game because of what it did for the series. But it, it is one that would be improved upon later. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. So so yeah, we're in the four star range here. Um, I'm thinking uh, definitely above Honey Pop. Um, the Honey Pop only got it a four star because it has really good like puzzle puzzle game gameplay. Like the mm. the rest of the game is like kind kind of just okay. It just has like this one like thing that it does really well. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking probably also above the Sexy Brutal. That game's really neat, but it's also like the the Sexy Brutal is like a very like playthrough at one time and and you've basically gotten gotten what you're gonna get out of it kind of game because it's very heavily story based and mm-hmm. is very like puzzle solving like you know find the solution yeah now that sounds like you're describing uh, helltaker kind of yeah a little (laughs) bit um although the sexy brutal is longer than helltaker and has like a more unique setup for its mechanics um that's actually the first game i talk about in uh episode one which is going to be airing uh the day after we, we record this so interesting uh tune into that for 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 more more detail on the sexy brutal yeah. is, but, uh, is this but, yeah, going that... up on saturdays yes uh, yeah every other saturday every other saturday so this episode is um, going to yeah, come except out when... in like four weeks uh something like that yeah gotcha. and, i mean th- this series is going to be like a little bit less like solid in terms of update schedule than uh than fist of film Rail because like Basically, what I want to do is Fist of Film Reel is, you know, on the Saturdays that it is. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then like, on Saturdays that aren't Fist of Film Reel days, I always want to have something uploaded. And if I have a scripted video ready, then I'll do that. And if I don't have a scripted video ready, then it'll be the leaderboard. So it'll be, like, the leaderboard is every other Saturday unless I have a scripted video to upload, in which case it'll get uh, overruled, essentially. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. All right. So what I what I wanna yeah. what I wanna do with you is I wanna get you to play and finish Sonic Three, potentially mm-hmm. try CD. I'm not entirely sure if you want to do that, but I'm doing it. I mean, I've I've played a chunk of CD, and I I, I don't know if I'm ever really gonna finish CD because like the the changes to the level design just don't really jive with me personally. Mm-hmm. So uh, the the reason I say CD is because I I like I can see that's a game I wouldn't like if I played it as a child. But like now that I'm playing it as an adult, that I just got my hands on it, I am really, really appreciating like the the wild differences that it has from like most other Sonic games. Um, yeah, it's definitely really interesting. Yeah, um, it's incredibly it's just, different, like, the... and it's cool. Yeah. But anyway, um, to finish up like the the ranking of Sonic Two here, yes. like I said, it's definitely above Honey Pop and the Sexy Brutal. Now, where I'm kind of like hitting uh hitting a snag is i'm not sure whether it should go above or below ion fury i don't Um, know that game so so ion fury is this really interesting uh build engine shooter that that came out uh i think last year um so the build engine was this 1990s uh first person shooter engine that like duke nukem 3d and blood and shadow warrior were built on Mm. and for ion fury they took they took that engine from the 90s and they like they 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 used a source port of it called Edu32 and they fucking they did a bunch of like nutso shit with that engine that like you could not have done on 1990s computers and that the engine was not really designed to handle but they did it anyway just by like fucking with the engine and it's like it's like it's a really impressive technical achievement and it's making me not 100% sure whether i think it goes like above or below uh Sonic 2 mm-hmm. i think what's going to weigh here I'm... more is going to be your personal preference honestly because that sounds like a cool game and it sounds like something uh you like knowing you it sounds like something you would like very much so right inherently i'm yeah, going it's... to leave it up to you like if if it de- if it depended on me i would put it above it because that's just you know how it is for me but mm-hmm. yeah it's just the ranking is yours, i, I think i friend. might actually <laughs> Yeah, I think I think I might actually give Sonic Two the edge here, just because like it has a lot of historical significance and um, and it has like a lot of charm to it. Which Ion Fury has charm in a certain way, but it's in like a very like it's in a very like sort of like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's it's in sort of a 
fuck, what's the word? <laughs> uh, it's 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 in like an imitative kind of way, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like kind of imitating the style of '90s shooters, and like that has a charm for sure. But I don't think that has as much charm as like the kind of new stuff that Sonic Two brought to the table. So I think I think I'll give Sonic Two the edge here. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we got Sonic the Hedgehog Two for the Sega Genesis, uh, currently ranked number two on the leaderboard. Uh, and I guess all that's left to do now is plugs. So be sure to follow Enzo at underscore Tonuha on Twitter. Uh, follow me at FlattenD on Twitter. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more, you know, podcasts and videos and whatnot. Enzo is also a co-host on Fists of Film Reel, my violent movies podcast here on this very same channel. Yeah, the homelessness uh, podcast. Then, yes, the homelessness podcast. <laughs> and uh, also be sure to, you know, follow my my Twitch channel uh, at NilcadNaquita or twitch.tv slash NilcadNaquita uh, for Twitch streams where where I will be probably finishing games that will eventually be ranked on this list sometimes. Hell yeah. 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 All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you had a great day. Go play Sonic Two and then play Sonic Three. Yeah, they're they're cool games. They're cool games for cool dudes. Fuck you, Mario. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>